Hi everyone, I'm Liz Kohler-Brown. I'm an artist, designer, and teacher, and today I want to show you how to download and use the new minimalist style digital planner I created. I want to show you how I like to use the planner and a few tricks for bookmarking important notes, plus a few helpful features of GoodNotes 5. I created this planner using the process in my class on how to design a digital planner in Procreate. So if you'd like to create a planner like this in your own style using only your iPad, then check out the class on my site. But for today, we're just going to look at how to use this new planner. I created this planner in a minimalist style because I really wanted it to be easy to customize with the colors and stickers that work for your personal style. So I wanna show you a few different ways to customize it and make it your own. So first, let's take a look at how to download the planner. If you're watching this on YouTube, you just need to click the link below the video to get to this blog post. Once you get to the blog post, you'll see the images of all of the different planner pages, and then you'll see download the minimalist bullet journal. So I'll click and hold on that and then click open in a new tab. It may take just a second for that to download depending on your internet speed. And then you should see the option open in GoodNotes. If you don't, click more, and then you can find GoodNotes on that list. One note here, if you're using Notability or another planner app, you have to extract the PDF from this file. So to do that, you need an unzipping app like iZip. So if you're using Notability, for example, you would open this file in iZip, then go open the PDF in iZip and open that in Notability. The one downside there is you wouldn't have the stickers because I did create this planner in GoodNotes. So I'm going to go ahead and click Copy to GoodNotes. And then it's going to ask me where do I want to import this file. So it's saying before the current page or after the current page. So it's asking me if I want to put it inside my existing planner. I don't want to do that. I want to change the location. And I'm just going to put it in my main documents folder. You could create a new folder for downloaded planners, something like that. And then I'll click import as a new document. Then once I go back to my gallery, you can see the new planner there. It's called Final Planner. So you may want to go ahead and rename that file. I'm going to click on the little arrow beside the planner name. And then you can just delete the title and title it something else. Once you've typed your name, you can just click Done and then click somewhere else to save that. And now it has its new name. So first, let's take a look at how to click around to the sections of the planner. So I'll click on the planner and then you'll see it opens to the main page. So when you're ready to start clicking, you have to be sure to turn off the no pencil symbol here. So when this is on and you can see all these drawing tools, all you can do with these is write. You can't click on the links. So I'm going to click the back button to remove that line that I just created. So if I want to be able to click the links, I have to click that little no pencil tool. So now I can start clicking on things and all of these buttons work. So what you'll see here is the navigation menu that takes you to all the sections. And then of course, each month of the year corresponds to the monthly spread and we'll look at those. There's also a little link in the top here that goes to the section of my site where I post free stickers and planners. So if you want to get some more stickers that aren't already in here, you can click on that and then click yes to go to that page on my site. So I just want to click around to the various sections first. So this is the calendar button here. This will always take you to the home page where you can see the monthly view. Then we have a goals section that takes you to a monthly view and you click on it and it takes you to the goal for that month. So here's June. I have three different sections for three different goals. If I go back to the goals page and click on July, it's the same thing for each month. 
So I'll show you how I use stickers to mark these goals and then you can just write the information down these columns. The next section is a blank paper section. So you could do anything here, charts, notes, sketches, and then a lined paper section. I tend to take a lot of notes in these and then bookmark them for later. And then the stickers section. So that's where you'll find all of the stickers that you can use throughout your planner. And I'll show you how I use these as well. If we go back to the monthly view and click June, then it'll take you to the monthly page. So that will be the case for each month of the year. There's March. And then if we just scan over one page, that takes you to the monthly view. So there's five pages of weekly pages after each month. So you've got March, week, 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 and then you have April. So you can scan through this way, but it is easier to navigate by just clicking on the calendar, click on the month you wanna use, and then swipe over to the week that you're working with. So that's all the sections of the planner. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the ways that you can customize this. So if you click on the pen tool so that you can't click on links anymore, you can start writing you'll see that there are a lot of options here. The first one is a pen. So if you click on the pen, you then have the option to change the width. So we have small, medium, and thick. I usually use medium. And then you have the option to set three colors that are your three main colors that you use. So if you click on one of those color dots, you can select a color. And I tend to use these three colors over and over because it just gives it a more cohesive feel. But obviously you can use any of the colors in this palette and you can also go to custom and let's choose a new color, for example, a green and click add to presets. So now that green will always be here and you can easily put it up into your favorite colors section. So what I do at the beginning of each month is just fill in the dates. So I'll do that first. So let's say you write in all the dates and then you realize you don't really like the color that you chose. You can easily change the color of the pen by clicking the lasso tool lasso around all of those numbers that you just created, click one time, and then click color. So then I can just change that, let's say, to a gray so it matches the actual planner a little bit better. And I'm gonna click the back button here because I accidentally moved those, and then just re-edit that color. So once you change the color, you just click over here to undo that lasso selection. And then you can see we've got a nice light gray that matches the layout of the planner. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some notes to my planner here. So now that I have a few things written on my planner, there are a few things I can do with that information. If there's something really important, we could highlight it. So I'll click the highlighter, and that's the little third tool right here. And then I can choose a color, just like we did with the pen. You can click on it and choose one of the colors, or you can choose a custom color. I'm just going to go with a yellow on this blue text. So you can just go straight across and the highlighter automatically makes a perfectly straight line. We could also add an additional layer. And let's say your highlighter is kind of messy, like you accidentally went way too far like that. You can grab your eraser and just clean that up on both sides if you'd like. Another tool that I use often is the shape tool and what that does is it helps you create a properly aligned shape or a line. So let's say for example I want to underline this 12 p.m. meeting. So I've got my shape tool selected and then I chose the color I want to use 
And then I'm just creating some lines across to emphasize that section. Another thing I could do here with the image option here, click that one time, and then you will see your photos over on the right, your most recent photos. If you click it again, you can get a little pop-up that shows your camera roll. So I'm gonna to go to my camera roll and choose an image to put here. So I need to create some more mock-ups so then I've got that image there as a reminder. So that's just one example of how you can add some handwritten text, some highlighting and lines and images. One last thing you can do here is take a picture. So you'd use your iPad camera to take a picture and it'll insert that. Or we could add some text. So if you click the text tool, and then click somewhere and type. Then you can double click to highlight that text and change the font. So we can change the size of the font and then later we'll change the size of that box so it all fits on one line. We can change the size of the border here. We can add a background color so if you want this to be sort of highlighted I don't tend to use the text tool a lot. I really prefer just handwritten words on my planner, but I just wanted to show you that option. So one thing to keep in mind is that when you're ready to delete stuff, the lasso tool is really helpful. If you click on the lasso tool one time, you'll see the option to select what you do and don't want the lasso to remove or select. So for example, do you want the lasso tool to select handwriting, images, text boxes? So I want it to select this text box so I can delete it. So I'm just gonna circle around that text box, click one time and click delete. So I can do that with any of the items on this page. Another thing you may wanna do is bookmark a section of your planner. So I'm gonna click the no pencil symbol. I'm gonna to go to the lined pages section and I'm just going to write some quick notes here. Okay so I've got some notes here that I want to be easy to find later on. So because there are tons of pages in this lined paper section if you take a lot of notes you'll end up having a hard time finding what you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark this page. The first thing I like to do is name it. So I click add this page to outline. So first I clicked the three dot menu, add this page to outline, and I'm gonna name it YouTube video, add. So now this is part of my planner outline. So it has like its own chapter sort of. Next, I'm gonna click this little save button up here and that should turn red when you click it. And then you can go to your planner outline for box menu there. And then you see a little red bookmark that says YouTube video. And if you click your favorites, then only the things that you've bookmarked will show up here. So any important notes that you're saving will all show up on this page. So I'll click close to get out of that menu and I'm going to take you to my planner that I'm using so you can kind of see how I've filled this in a little bit. So I tend to use a few colors over and over and then I tend to add a sticker on important dates. So for example, let's say I wanted to add an anniversary right here. So I'll click the no pencil symbol, I'll go to the stickers page. I'll go back to the pencil so I can use my tools, click the lasso. I'm going to get this heart symbol. And if you can see here, I'm lassoing just on the center of that image. I'm not lassoing like this all the way around it because that's going to pick up all these other things that it's getting close to. So I'm lassoing just anywhere in the center of the sticker. Click one time, click copy, and back to the no pencil symbol, and I'm gonna to return to that planner page in June. 
And so I'll click and hold and click paste. Resize that with a little dot here. And I can replace the bullet and just fill in my text. So another thing that you may want to do is have recurring events. So for example, there's something that I do on every Friday. So I'm going to get my lasso tool. After I've written it one time, circle it, click one time, click copy, and then click and hold down here and click paste. So it's really easy to add recurring events. You don't have to write it every single time. You can just take your time, write it nicely once, and then repeat it throughout your calendar. I also want to show you how I use the goals page. So I'm going to go to my June goals page. So sometimes I'll use an icon, something I got online and just cropped, or sometimes I'll just write some text. So you can use the stickers, you can take a picture, whatever you need to mark what your goal is. And then what I just do is use the highlighter to just mark when I did that day. You could do a dot, you could write something, maybe it's like a weight loss goal or some kind of health or work related goal. So you've got three sections for those, but sometimes I'll lump three similar things into the same column because there's plenty of space for that. And you can see on my weekly page here, I tend to cross out the days or things that I've completed. And I'm just doing that with the shape tool to get that straight line. So because today's Saturday and yesterday was Friday, I'm just going to go through and create that straight line. There's also a notes section on the week view, and I just use that for priorities, but obviously you could put anything there like a list or whatever your goal is for that week. So I hope you enjoy using this planner. Please let me know if you have any questions. And remember, you can learn to make your own planner like this one that you can sell or give away or use just for personal use. You can find a link to watch that class under this video. I have a lot more free planners and stickers on my site, so check those out if you'd like to get more like what you saw in this video. And just leave a comment or send me an email if you have any questions about making your planner or using one of mine. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye!